So we're starting in chapter R. It's kind of a review chapter, things that you should know coming into this course, but I like to think of it more of like a refresher than a review. So it's probably, for some of you, been a while since you've done math, done algebra. Um, so this will just brush up on your scales a little bit. So section R.1, you should have your packet in front of you. We're going to run through this together. Um, there will be, again, uh, problems we'll work through together, problems for you to try, and that will eventually work through after you've had time to practice on your own. So R.1 talks about greatest common factor and the least common multiple. What are the differences between the two and how do I actually find uh, the greatest common factor, at least common multiple of some numbers. So, first of all, we want to talk about factoring. It's all over math, especially all over algebra. And it's a really important skill set that we have to have. So, we'll only ever be factoring with natural numbers in this class right now. And what are natural numbers? They are the counting numbers starting from a 1. We don't include 0, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, so to factor something means we want to write it as a product. So when I factor something, the operation that I'm involved with is multiplication. Everything needs to be multiplied together for it to be completely factored. So let's look at the factors of 150. How can I break up 150 into a product of two numbers? So the first case is always really boring. 1 times itself, and that'll give me out 150. So 1 and 150 are factors of 150. And what else? It's just kind of helpful to go in order. Is it divisible by 2? It sure is. So we gain two more factors. Divisible by 3. 3 and 50. All right, what about 4? 150 divisible by 4? No, so we skip that one, move on. 5 and 30 also gives us 150. Two others, what else? 6 and 25. And lastly, kind of the natural one you want to try when you see 150 is 10. Alright, so what does that mean? What are all the different factors of 150? So in this class and in math in general, you'll see three little dots in a triangle sometimes together. That just means therefore. So this happened, therefore, blah, 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 blah. Shorthand, so we don't have to write out therefore every single time. So if you see that, that's what I'm talking about. So therefore, factors of 150 are what? Starting with 1. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10. And then I'm going to start going up this row. 15, 25, 30, 50, 75, and itself. 150. Alright. So we want to break it into whole numbers, natural numbers that multiply together to give me whatever number we're trying to find the multiples of, or the factors of. So go ahead and take that try. Find all the factors of 16. Pause the video if you need to. We'll run through it together after you've taken a shot. So how can I break up 16? What factors am I looking at? Always one in itself. Pretty boring. Starting up from one, two, and eight, we can break it up. Four and four, Anything larger, if I choose like 8, for example, we're back to 8 and 2. So we don't want to write any repeats. So therefore, the factors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. All right. So we use that word factor both as a noun. This is a factor. These are factors of 16, and the process of breaking it up is factoring. So we use it both as a noun and a verb. So you'll see both of those cases. So what happens 
if I take a natural number and it has exactly two different factors and two factors only, itself and one. Those special numbers are called prime numbers. If I can only break a number up into itself and the number one, it's prime. I can't break it into other factors like we've seen here. So, looking at that do, which of these numbers are prime between 5, 8, 11, 16, and 1? So, which numbers can I only break up to into themselves and the number 1? So, 5 is prime. 8 is not because we can break it up into 4 and 2 other factors. 11 is prime. 16, we've already broken it up and seen that there are more factors than just 1 and 16. And 1. I can break that up into 1 in itself. It's also prime. All right. So of that, try. Take a peek. Between 8, 6, 13, and 14, which of those numbers are prime? So, what are you thinking? 13. I can only break that up into itself and the number 1. All right. So that's that one special case. If a natural number other than 1 is not prime, so I could break it up into other factors. For example, 16 is not prime, 150 is not prime. We call those numbers composite because they're composed of other numbers. We could break it up. Every composite number can be factored into a product. of prime numbers. I can break it down until I reach a point where everything is prime at the bottom. Such a factorization, you've probably heard of it before, is called a prime factorization. Or maybe you've heard the term prime factorization tree. That means the same thing. Breaking it down until I can't go any farther, until everything is prime. So our first example, we want to find the prime factorization of 36. I want to break that number down into factors until everything is prime. I can't go any farther. So you have a lot of different options to start off. Just start with two factors of 36. Naturally, you might want to pick a certain combo. I like 6 and 6, but there are so many other options as well. We'll always break down to the same primes. So what you start with doesn't matter. And we have to ask, can I break up 6 any farther? Is 6 prime? And it's not. We can break it up into 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Okay. And in that case, these new factors, can I break them down any farther? No, they're both prime. So this is the prime factorization of 36. Is everything that's prime at the bottom? So sometimes the tree isn't going to end up so evenly and flat on the bottom. So I think it's helpful to maybe mark what your prime factors are so you don't forget any as you're writing out the prime factorization of 36. So I've got two factors of 2, three factors of 3, or excuse me, two factors of 3. All right, let's do another one. Breaking up 50 into its primes. Again, you can start with anything you want. 5 and 10, 2 and 25, however you want to start. I'm going to jump with 5 and 10. So, what about 5? It's prime. I can't break it down any farther. And I don't want to forget about it. So I'm going to include him in my prime factorization. But I can break up 10 down farther into 2 and 5. And with each of these factors, they're both prime. We can't go any farther. So I need to include the 2 and I need to include the 5. So 50, it's prime factorization. 2 times 5 times 5 will get us there. All right, so one for you to try. Take 48, break it up into its prime factorization. So what did you start with? There's a lot of different options. I'm going to go with 6 and 8. If you chose some other numbers, you'll see we get the same prime factorization at the bottom, at the end. So I need to break up 6, it's not prime, into 2 and 3, 
or 3 and 2. Order doesn't matter with multiplication. Those are primes, so don't forget to include them. And I can break up 8 farther into 4 and 2. 2 is prime, 4 is not, we can go farther. And now every single factor is prime at the bottom. So 48 can be broken up into 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? 1, 2, 3, 4 factors of 2, 1 factor of 3. So even if you started with something else, did you get the same thing down here? Yeah, pretty cool.